To the east in Cape we go, it's where we find my colleague Lwandile Mbulali. The six members of the George family who were murdered last week will be buried today at a village in Tolo in the Eastern Cape. Five of the victims were gunned down in their beds, we understand, in the early hours of Wednesday last week. Prior to that, a, a young man was also hacked to death. I understand that Lwandile is with the Premier of the Eastern Cape. He joins us now live. Uh, Luandila, a very good morning to you. Firstly, give us some context um, and the history behind this case and the possible motive uh, with regards to these killings. Well, a very warm welcome to you and to you, everyone watching at home. We are here at Zolo in the Eastern Cape. You know, this is where uh, the five members of the George family have been laid to rest. As you can see, our men of this village are busy as they have just been, uh, they, their coffins have just go, uh, gone down. Uh, if I can just give you a context of what happened, you know, on the 25th, an elder brother of this family was hanged to death and his body was found just meters away from his home. And then on the 28th in the early hours of the morning the five family members were gunned down at their home you know as I, and i remember just speaking to some of the uh, family members who were just telling us of the scene when they woke up that day you know telling us that two of the men of that family were found outside and you can see that they were running from what was happening and they you know telling us that they had gunshots in the early hours of the morning and none of them wanted to go out and see what was going on because if maybe they, or they had gone out, you know, uh, maybe they would have been part of this uh, burial here today. So they said they did hear some gunshots, but they were uh, very scared of going out to see what was happening. But it is still not clear, you know, what happened because yesterday we were in court and the, 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 the people that are suspected of doing this, you know, are four brothers and then one of the uh, cousin. So it is still not clear what might have happened or what is the motive behind this gruesome murder and you know when we went to that home that day it was closed and you could see blood all over the homestead and you know we spoke to the family members extended family members if i may put it that way and they were saying that they were not they did not know how they were going to bury these six family members because they have been struggling themselves even in that george family member i mean george family the six that had passed away none of them were working so they were saying that you know they uh, did not know how they were going to uh, to going to bury these family members and you know uh, we I did try to to speak to some of them right now to be my guest for this crossing here but they did mention that they are still busy in the homestead some are still busy here but now I do have a guest actually the premier of the Eastern Cape who will just tell us about how they assisted this family uh, first the premier this you know, it, it, this, is, this has not been seen in this province. This is very surprising. This is shocking. Very shocking. Uh, uh, very sad. Uh, uh, it's one of those things that you can't really fathom, that you can't, can't really explain. Uh, how, how does it uh, happen? I visited the family a few days after the terrible is incident. I could pick a sense that uh, this... Uh, is occasioned uh, because of the family feud and uh, the matter is being handled. Uh, I'm happy that police have uh, acted swiftly within 24 hours. They've managed to actually detect and follow uh, through the leads and able to uh, get some people uh, behind bars. So we do have uh, such people now, uh, including the main person uh, who's uh, suspected to be the hitman. Uh, that has been confirmed. So we're quite happy and quite relieved as government that uh, something has been done uh, to that extent. And uh, we hope that uh, justice uh, uh, will be actually served here and uh, these people will have a closure when they know exactly who did this uh, and what was the issue uh, behind all what has happened. You talk about uh, seven bodies that are being buried here that are almost linked in one incident. Uh, it's not only five. Today we are burying six from the George and the one from the other family in Danjana, they are all linked into the same incident. It's a terrible thing. It should not happen in a country that is uh, liberated, in a society that is free, where uh, we know exactly 
the fight for human rights, uh, uh, what that uh, fight has meant to us, uh, towards our liberation. So it's a very terrible thing, uh, very, very uh, unbelievable, I must say. Um, an old woman of 80 years, you can imagine, when you just come and uh, destroy a family, kill an old woman who cannot do anything uh, to protect herself. Uh, I, don't, I don't mean that uh, you can kill other people. I mean just this thing of people being so easy to kill and destroy uh, humanity. It's a terrible thing. It's a bad one. We really condemn this in the most strongest uh, possible terms. And uh, we're here uh, to mourn with the family, but also to convey our heartfelt and uh, deepest condolences to the families. I know I've met young kids here, uh, two young daughters who were fortunate, uh, who escaped this because they were elsewhere for holidays. Uh, they would have been killed as well if they were, here, if they were uh, at home on that um, at fateful night. It's, it's a terrible thing. It must not happen. Uh, it should be stopped. We are here to mobilize the community to ensure that they work with government, work with South African police services uh, to ensure that uh, we really um, uh, avoid incidents of this nature and they create uh, proper dialogues in our family institutions and engage on issues, find solutions. Uh, we can always uh, find panaceas to the problems like this. I don't think this uh, violence uh, or violent approach is helpful. You mentioned that it's a family feud and now the, the, the other family members are, have been arrested. You know, some believe that the state has a strong case a, a, a strong case against those that have been arrested. Maybe this case won't take long before it is resolved. Yes, we hope so. We hope so through the cooperation and uh, to a certain extent some have already cooperated but I would want to leave that to justice uh, because you don't want it to uh, preempt what uh, will actually be unfolding in that uh, courtroom. So the magistrate is there, uh, the prosecutors are there, and the police have done their work. They've arrested. That's what we want. So we, now we want justice to be served. And we, we uh, indeed, uh, justice uh, delayed is justice denied. So you would want to have a closure here. This area of Solo, uh, for your information, it's an area that is also prone to this sort of violence. It has been happening, and uh, a few years ago, I was, I was in another area where people were being killed every day. When you get a sense from the communities that, no, these young boys who are killing people here now, uh, they were young in early 90s when their families were destroyed. So it's a kind of a vicious cycle that you see. So you don't want that recurring uh, unfortunate scenes. We've got to find a way of stopping this thing. And uh, we are trying to nip it in the bud. Uh, that's why we are all out uh, as government to make sure that we are with this community, we are this family. And we want community to be free. Community, community must come forward and uh, give uh, out information properly and be protected as well. So because we need to protect those whistleblowers to make sure that uh, we are able to uh, remove the bad elements in our communities and stop violence in our communities. I did mention earlier on that uh, the family members mentioned that they were not, they were, they were unable to bury the the the, 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 the the fallen ones. What has the government done to assist them? And also, you know, in, in terms of uh, giving counselling to the neighbours because they woke up to a horror scene that day. Yes, definitely. Government has actually put together a very formidable uh, team to look at all the uh, issues relating to this incident, psychosocial support that you need, counselling, etc. That has been in place. Social development has been uh, hands-on in that. Uh, thanks to our municipalities, both the district and the local have been hands-on to ensure that these families uh, don't uh, feel this uh, uh, double jeopardy, uh, this uh, double pain of not knowing how are they going to bury their loved ones. Government has come in there handy at the local level uh, to make sure that uh, we are able to help um, uh, on an interim basis and we'll be able to see how then we move forward. You've got to, uh, those young kids, for that family not to uh, perish, you've got to look after those young kids. They must go to school to have their own future. They must be counseled. I know they might grow up with anger uh, of what has happened. Uh, no one wants just to lose a family like this, uh, the way that it, it has happened. So uh, as government, we have been there to support. We have been actually working together with the family step by step. It's going to be a process, of course.
Thank you so much, Premier. Thank you. Yeah. That was the Premier of the Eastern Cape, Mr. Oscar Mabuya, and he's just talking about what they have actually done to assist the George family that are burying their members here today. And I did mention that the suspect appeared in the Zolo Magistrate Court yesterday, and they're appearing again for a formal bail hearing on the 19th of July. Uh, from us here in Zolo, back to you in studio.